today we are working on Psalm 93. Now in Psalm Magic, Psalm 93 is often used to bring comfort when somebody is going through a difficult situation. It's also used very commonly for justice and court cases. Today we are using it to bring stability to an unstable situation. Bring stability to an unstable situation. The way we work psalm magic is very effective and very simple. We take the psalm in question and we read it out loud all the way through once without stopping. This is our incantation. Then we go back through that same psalm and we take it apart. We look under the hood, we dig, we search, we find (laughs) inner occult meanings within that psalm. And these we see as little magic seeds. And there are an infinite number of little magic seeds. And by searching for them and digging for them and contemplating them and then applying them as we can to whatever the situation is that we brought to the psalm, we are in effect taking those little magic seeds and planting them deeply in the fertile grounds of our mind where they take root and they grow and they blossom forth and then they bear fruit after their kind. And that's exactly what we are going to do together right now, you and I, with Psalm number 93. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. This is obviously a very ancient psalm, and there is some Canaanite imagery where it's hearkening back to earlier iterations of what it must have been. And those old versions of the psalms are are lost to history. But we can see in this psalm that this one hasn't been stepped on as much as many of the other psalms. You can see it just by the way it has maintained its ancient structure. All right, so the Lord. Who is the Lord? We can't think of the Lord in terms of patriarchal Hebraic deity. That doesn't work magically. As a magician, it's very important that you understand what the Lord is representing. The Lord represents the singular power of the universe. It is pre-gender. And as such, it has the qualities of all divinity. And the qualities of divinity that we can even list a few of them now, just to understand what we mean by the Lord. Infinite life. It's the life principle itself. That means that life itself emanates from this one source, this one power. And life never ends. Death is not the ending of life. It is the changing of form. Life always continues, no matter what. When something or someone dies, life continues on. It is infinite soul. Infinite soul. Think about what that means for you. You are an individuation of this infinite power. The Lord, if you will, infinite intelligence itself, the source of all life, extended itself as you. You are to the Lord what a sunbeam is to the sun. And as such, you are very unique. There is no one like you anywhere infinite spirit. Now, what is that? Infinite spirit. Infinite spirit is that which cannot be destroyed. It's invulnerable. Nothing can thwart it. Nothing can oppose it. 
Nothing can vitiate it. It is completely 100% invulnerable. It's mighty. And that's what the Lord is. So when you're working with this source, the force of the universe that is not male or female, it's before all of that. When you're working with this power, nothing can oppose you because nothing can oppose it. It's infinite intelligence. Now that means that it knows how to make universes and galaxies and seas and embryos and babies and plants and trees and forests and stars. It knows all of that. We can't do any of that. We can't do even a little bit of that by ourselves. But remember that we are extensions of that. We are one with that. It's infinite truth. Infinite truth. The magnificent power that is infinite truth. No lie can stand up in the face of infinite truth, divine truth, just like the darkness cannot stay in the room when you turn a light on. So lies and untruths just completely dissolve in the presence of divine truth. It's perfect love perfect love. Now, you know what it's like to love someone or love something. You know what it's like to love a puppy or a child. You know what that feeling is. Well, that's just a small, tiny, little fraction of perfect love. The the love that the infinite has for you personally, personally, loves you infinitely, unconditionally. Nothing you can do can make it stop loving you. You can try, and boy, do we try hard, but it can't work. You can't stop this force from loving you. Infinite law. The laws of this force cannot be broken. It's impossible to break these laws. You can't break the law of gravity. You might be able to, with, with through, the, through other laws, be able to sort of suspend the laws of gravity in time, but the laws of gravity are always going to be there. You can't make the, the planet stop revolving around the sun. And all of those infinite divine laws are active at all times. Now, the only way that we can appear to violate divine law is by going to sleep. It's by going to sleep to it. It's by imagining that we are. But we can't. Infinite law will not, cannot be broken. And the good news is you're not under anyone's laws except for the infinites. You're under no laws but God's. So these are some of the things you can think about in order to orient yourself to this when you're working psalm magic. And it's very important that you do so. So that, that's what the Lord is. <laughs> that force. So the Lord reigneth. So remember, these psalms are written at a time when monarchies were the only kind of power. And so the idea of this Lord as a royal, as a king or queen, if you will, as as royalty, makes a lot of sense. He is clothed with majesty. So the, the force being clothed with majesty is really a wonderful image for us to recognize that there is nobody or nothing in the world that has power over us because that is our monarchy right there. That is our royalty, is the, the source of our life, the source of all of our life. That's what we are beholden to. We are not beholden to anything of this world. The Lord is clothed with strength. Now that is specifically talking to us of sphere number five on the tree of life. Clothed with strength, that means it's clothed as the angel Samael, for those of you that work with angel magic. So a lot of times people think of Samael and Mars as being really scary, kind of vicious warrior entities, but they are truly just the strength of God. They're the strength of God. That means that nothing can oppose it. Nothing can thwart it. And that means that nothing can oppose or thwart you. And so any of that instability that you may be experiencing, you give that right straight to the strength of God. You give that right straight to, if you will, Samael or 
one of the warrior angels or warrior deities that you work with to take care of for you. The Lord is clothed with strength. That's a wonderful way of thinking of deity, isn't it? Different deities. Maybe you maybe you work with dif different pantheons instead of angels. We work with angels a lot around here. It doesn't matter. It's just God wearing different drag. It's the Lord being clothed as strength, right? Just another way of understanding this one power. Wherewith he hath girded himself. So, the Lord has girded himself or itself, themselves, with this strength. So you don't have to. So you don't have to. The world is also established that it cannot be moved. So the world that God established for you cannot be moved. Now, the only time that we can have real instability, ultimately, is when we believe that we're living in a world that God didn't create for us. Because God's creation, God's world cannot be moved. God is, it's already established. There's nothing that anybody can do to move it. So any of that instability that you're experiencing, that's not God's will. Very clearly stated here. That's not God's will. God's will is that you be very stable, that you be very protected. God has girded himself so that you are protected at all times. You personally, you, you, you are meant to take this personally. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You got to take all this magic very personally. Thy throne, now we're speaking, now we're not talking about the Lord, now all of a sudden we're talking to the Lord. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. So, the throne of God is depicting, if you work with angel magic, is depicting the archangel Uriel. It's depicting the archangel Uriel, who is the angel of the presence of God. So, when we're talking about the throne that God has established, that means that in more of a mystical understanding, that we are heirs to experiencing the presence of God themselves. The presence of God themselves. Not some idea up in the sky, not some concept of, it, of infinite beings. This is the very presence, the very visceral understanding that the help is right here. It's very stable. And the stability of the throne of God is there for you too. And it's been established of old. That means that this is nothing new. This is nothing new. God's stability has been there for you from the beginning of time. But it's up to you to accept it. It's up to you to allow yourself to realize that rather than, like we were talking before, experiencing an unstable earth, which is not God's will and which is not of God's making. So we have to make a decision here and now that we are going to be a part of God's will, which is stability, rather than another foreign or alien will, which gives us this illusory experience of instability. But don't think illusory means that it doesn't seem real. Because in the realm of this illusion that we experience, it's very real. So when we say illusory, don't ever say, oh, well, it's just an illusion, so who cares? No, we've got to actually treat it. We've got to go through it. We've got to actually confront it head on, whatever that instability is, and say, wait a minute, this isn't God's will. I want God's will instead of this. Because his, th his throne or their throne, if their throne was established at the beginning of all time, so the stability is my birthright. Thou art from everlasting. So remember when we talked about last week about everlasting, meaning living happily ever after? This is going the other direction in time. That there has always been eternity. There's always been this throne. There's always been this stability. There's never been anything but stability. That's important to recognize, because if we're experiencing instability, then we're experiencing something that's never existed. It's not like it once existed and then it got fixed. It's never existed because it's been from everlasting. So it never will exist. It never has existed. That's good news. And when we can grok that, when we can actually internalize that, 
and realize that, then when our realization of that makes it real for us because it's God's will. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. Now, this is the instability. This is the unstable situation that you seem to find yourself in. So we don't say, oh, it's just an illusion. It's not there. No, no, no. You look at that straight in the face and you say, these storms are real. These waves are real. This violent sea is real. It's rocking me. It's rock. It's it's taken all the cliffs off. It's 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 flooding the land. It's eroding everything in my life. It's real to me. So I'm expecting, I'm expecting help in a real way from you because you're stable, but I appear to be in unstable. And so I'm being very clear and honest with you, O oh force, O oh sacred force of the universe, that your stability is what I want rather than all of these floods, the floods that have lifted up. The floods lift up their waves. Now, just seeing that for yourself, just visualizing that for yourself is very good to do because it gives an image to that which is being taken care of for you. So we're not pretending like nothing's really happening. We're not skimming over this. Whatever this unstable situation is in your life, it's like big waves swallowing you up drowning you, possessing you, overtaking you, overcoming you. You have no power over them. Imagine being in the midst of a tsunami. That's what this is feeling like for you. So it's good to say that. It's good to acknowledge that. It's good to be clear and honest with what you're, what you're experiencing rather than whitewashing it and saying, oh, all will be well when that's not really what you're experiencing. It will be well, but you got to go through it. You got to go through it to give it up. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Okay, so the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. I, I believe, if I can remember correctly, that in the Hebrew, it's the voices of many waters. The voices of many waters. So the voices in our heads, the voices of other people, the voices that are screaming out that nothing good will ever come of this, you are doomed, (laughs) all of that kind of stuff, is being drowned out by the voice of God. Now, the voice of God is what? The voice of peace. That's where God exists. That's where God's voice is. God's voice, the voice for God is that still, small voice within you. So to be able to find peace in the midst of being swallowed whole by these waves can sound like too big of a task, but the good news is that you don't have to accomplish that all by yourself. You do that by choosing to listen to that voice for God and let that voice for God do the work for you. Thy testimonies are very sure. So God's testimonies, God's testifying in the midst of all of this. And what is God's testimony? God's testimony is that you are safe, that you are stable. All is well, because that is God's will. So now it's up to us to accept God's will rather than the will of the illusion, the will of our egos, the will of this world, the will of what other people say it is, the will uh, will of the news cycle, the will of whatever else in the world whose voice is trying to crowd out the voice for God. But God's voice is pure peace and certainty and stability because that throne was established of old and thou art from everlasting. So there's nothing, there's nothing that those voices can do other than distract you. And we're not going to let those voices distract us anymore, are we? We're going to just say, no, we are claiming God's will for us rather than the will of whatever these problems are. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. So what is the house of God? Well, the house of God is ultimately, in this particular case, you. That's you. You are the house of God. God lives in you, as you through you. Remember, you are a soul. 
nor an extension of God. So, holiness becometh, becometh thine house forever. That means you are holy. God wills that you be holy. And God's holy house will not be unstable. God's holy house is built on a rock, not on the sand by some beach where the tsunami comes and sweeps it away. No, God's house exists beyond what any waves can touch, let alone demolish, and that's you. You are God's house in this sense. So, what you do is you just keep coming back to this psalm every single day, and eventually what you'll get is a sense of peace and certainty that whatever you brought to the psalm is being taken care of, and you stop worrying about it, basically. And that peace, that certainty is a sign to you that your spell has taken, that it's done, that the seeds are planted, and there's nothing more you need to do. And when that happens, when you get that little click, you just move off of it and go on to something else. Thank you so much for joining us today. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be.